The DroneBlocks app uses block programming where you drag and drop blocks of code onto the stage. That code becomes your mission that you can then send to the Tello to have it launch your mission. I'm very excited to tell you all about it. So first things first, grab your device. I'm going to be using an Android tablet in this example. And what you want to do is actually, this is going to be hard to see. We need to upgrade the classroom quickly. Um, that's better. So we have our Android tablet, and this is what it looks like to download the DroneBlocks app. Simply go to your web browser and go to droneblocks.io slash app. Now here you can see it's the DroneBlocks website, and there are three options. We can go iOS, Android, or the Chrome extension. For myself, because I'm on a tablet that's Android, I tap on Android. It then launches the Play Store. Then I can either download or open it. Now I've already downloaded it, so I'm just going to go open, and then it will launch the code. But if you wanted to see how to use the Play Store or the App Store, I'll show you that quickly. So all we need to do, close that again. Now, if we go to the Play Store, so tap on the Play Store, then tap on Search, then type in Drone Blocks, and then press the magnifying glass button. There we have the app. So I'm just going to say Download or Install, sorry, and then you see it installs it. So that's how we do it manually. But for your convenience, we have those three links on the droneblocks.io slash app. That's really great, especially if you have like an iPad or an Apple device. The download for iOS will take you to the App Store link. And the Chrome extension, that is going to be phased out. But for now, if you did want to use the Chrome extension on a PC or a Mac, you could do it that way. If you're on a Chromebook, we recommend downloading the app through the Play Store. Now, before you open the app, I need to show you something very important. To have the app run correctly, you have to be connected to the internet the first time you run the app. And that's not the first time ever. That's every time you run the app for the first time. What does that mean? Well, if you were in class, you'd be connected to the internet. Then you would open the app. Then you could pull down one of your saved missions, or you can start coding. As long as you have an internet connection when you first open the app, you'll be fine. Because what happens is sometimes you connect to your Tello, and then you open the DroneBlocks app and you see the screen behind us where it says, whoops, you're seeing this message because we're not connected to the internet. So that's just a quick, so you can either tether to your mobile phones if you're out in a, in a field or a competition environment. But if you're at school and you're on your school wireless, just make sure you're connected to the internet before you open the app. Now, let's actually look at what this app's all about. So the first thing we do is you get a warning saying, um, important, make sure you're on the latest firmware. Now, you've already done that in a previous video. So you can just hit skip. And then we get this, access the DroneBlocks curriculum. Now, if you're watching this video, I guess you've already accessed the curriculum. Whether you've purchased this or you're on a trial, it's a really cool curriculum that I'm going to explain in lesson three. So let's just say not now for now and move on to the actual app. Amazing. Now, this is what the DroneBlocks app looks like. It's very cool. And let's have a look. So now starting with the basics, we have the code palette over here. This is a list of different types of blocks that we can use. I'm going to break those down for you real quickly. Okay, so the first one we have is the takeoff. If you tap on that, it says takeoff. So that lets you take off or it lets you take off after a few seconds, okay? Then navigation, we have all the different navigation blocks. That's basically moving the drone in any direction or anything to do with movement. That's under navigation. Then we have the camera. Camera lets us take a photo or take X amount of photos with an interval. So one photo every, so five photos every five seconds. Next, we have the flip. Now, the flip is really cool. That's when the drone actually flips. Now, if you haven't seen it, um, no spoilers, you've got to check out these drones flip. It is so cool. And just wait till your students see it as well. Now, loops are, the programming term loops, they let you repeat yourself. Now, loops are a programming term, no, I'm just kidding. So loops let you repeat the same action a, a set amount of times. So you could fly in one direction five times which comes in real handy when we do shapes. I'll let you think about that one. Logic, these are if statements. So you can do some pretty cool things with block coding, including if statements. Then we have math. The math block is really cool. It lets you assign numbers. So for example, fly forward 10, or you could do fly forward five plus five. Still the same thing, right? There's so many cool things with the math block. It's very exciting. Then we have the variable. 
The variable one is really cool. At first, it doesn't do anything. You know, you click on it, it says create variable. Well, this lets you create variables. So you can actually make a variable like distance and you can assign it a value of 100 and you can say fly forward distance. It's very cool. And then functions is you can do something in a function. So we could make the drone fly and say a square. We can build a function called fly in a square. And every time we called that block, it would fly in a square. It's a, such a teachable block because you start teaching some really cool computer science concepts and programming concepts with that. Actually, with most of these blocks. That's why I love the drone blocks app. It's so cool. Right. Then we have the land section, which of course lets the drone land for a few seconds and take off again. Or it can land and then just stay sitting there. That's very cool. So now that you've seen our code palette and you've seen what kind of blocks we can work with, let's look at a couple more things quickly. Directly above me, we have our status bar. Now, when you connect to your drone, the status bar will tell you things like the distance from the ground, the altitude. It will tell you the pitch. It will tell you the roll. It will tell you the yaw. It will do all sorts of things. So, so it's called the telemetry data. Oh, fancy words. But yeah, you can get the telemetry data from the drone fed back directly up to the status bar. The most important one for you, of course, will be battery. So always have a look. If your battery is getting quite low, you'll know it's time to change it. Um, but it's also a good indicator that you're connected to the drone. Okay, so that's the status bar. You also have a really important button right up there. That is your connect to Tello. That's what we actually have to use to connect to our Tello which we'll show you shortly. And then lastly, that little hamburger looking thing is the menu. It takes you to your main menu. Okay, now you've learned the basics of the Drone Blocks app. And that takes us to the end of this video. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna jump into the next video where we're actually going to fly these drones. That's right, we're gonna go outside and fly this in a square. Once we've gone outside and we've flown our drone in a square, I'm going to show you how to save your mission so you can use it later. And we're gonna open your mission on three different devices. And then I'm going to show you how to share your devices with other people. And once we've wrapped all that up, that will cover the DroneBlocks app. We'll jump straight into using the DroneBlocks app in our simulator. So grab your drones and your devices and meet me in the next video.